Okay, welcome everyone. Thank you for joining us this afternoon for Ollie's summer 2023 virtual open house. Um, if you are available, we do have two in-person open houses, um, one in Morgantown and one in the Canal Valley upcoming, and we would love to see you, meet you in person, see you at one of those. The Morgantown open house will be at the Mountaineer Mall um, next Thursday, um, the 22nd at three o'clock, and then the following Monday, at um, three o'clock at the Schoenbaum Center in Charleston. So uh, once again, thank you for joining us. And um, for those of you who, who have been with Ollie, you're going to know some of this information. And for those of you who are new, um, so I would say to those of you who are who, who are, have been with us and know, please bear with me while I go through some of the information for our new people. Um, Ollie offers a series of lectures, presentations, hands-on workshops, discussion groups, uh, activities, lectures, social events that are all designed for people 50 plus. Now, when I say designed for people 50 plus, um, we do not discriminate. So if you are 49 or 46 or even 40 and want to join us, you are more than welcome to join us. Um, but we do tend to schedule during um, between 10 and 4, Monday through, Monday through Friday, um, when, when a lot of people are retired, um, and um, designed for 50 plus in other ways as well, um, providing handouts for classes. Um, but everybody's everybody is welcome to join us. So if you have a passion for learning, then Ollie is for you. Um, a little bit of information about the Osher Lifelong Learning Institute network. We are one of 125 Osher Lifelong Learning Institutes in the US. This map shows you um, where we are all located. There's one in Hawaii, one in Alaska. Um, we are the only one in West Virginia. Um, and as I just mentioned, we do have two chapters, one in Morgantown, one in Charleston for in-person classes and events. Um, but we also offer a lot of our programming on Zoom. So people who live outside of these regions or just physically can't get to our locations are, are able to, to join us as well. Um, in Morgantown, most of the in-person events are held at the Mountaineer Mall, is the entrance here on Green Bag Road. Um, support for our Morgantown chapter is provided in part by grants from the John Matthew Gay Brown Family Foundation and the George D. Hott Foundation. And in the Canal Valley, most are held at the Schoenbaum Family Center in Charleston, and support for that program is provided in part by a grant from the Greater Canal Valley Foundation, and we wish to thank all those foundations for their generous continued support. Um, regardless of where you live, all OLLI programming is open to all members, so if you live in the Canal Valley, but there's an in-person class in Morgantown that you want to come to and are willing to make the drive up, then you are more than welcome to. Just give the office a call and let us know. If you live out of town, out of state, but you happen to find yourself in town one day and want to participate in an OLLI, in-person OLLI event, we are more than happy to welcome you. So um, it is open to, to all members, all programming. We are at the start of our membership year. Our annual membership year runs July 1st through June 30th. So it is time for everyone who is who has been a member, who was a member over this past year, it's time for you to renew your memberships. Um, we have two different types of memberships. Um, the standard is $30. And uh, with the standard membership, we'll talk about some of the benefits a little later in, in this uh, presentation, but you have a number of benefits, a number of things that you can participate in without paying the additional term enrollment fee. Um, the term enrollment fee is $35. It's a flat fee. And we'll talk a little bit about, more about that in a little bit. Um, but the other the other membership is the what we call the annual plus membership. And you can through the middle of September, if you want to purchase the annual plus membership, it is $150. And basically that's your $30 membership plus four quarters of the term enrollment fee. So if you do the math here, you're actually saving $20 by paying for the whole thing up front. Um, with the standard membership, if there's a term in which you don't take classes, you don't have to pay that $35. 
um, some of the benefits. Um, one is access to our professional technologist. Her name is Michelle Klitschus, and she's going to speak about a couple of classes that she's offering. But she also offers a service to Ollie members called Ask a Geek, uh, where if you have a computer question, a laptop question, a, an app question, you've got a new phone and you need some help with it, you can schedule a time to talk with talk with Michelle and she will help you as best as she can. Um, Another benefit to OLLI membership is what we call shared interest groups. For those of you returning to OLLI, we used to call them special interest groups. We've changed that now to shared interest groups. Some of those are Twilight Trivia. We have a couple of book club, book discussion groups, yarn arts. We have a monthly Let's Do Lunch group. Um, we have a couple of walking groups. And actually, um, with the walking groups, this is going to be our first speaker. Hope Covey is with us this afternoon, and she's going to say a few words words about the the Thursday morning walking group that she she facilitates and hosts. You want that now? <laughs> sure, sure. <laughs> okay. Um I'm quite prepared for that this quickly, but get me volume up. Um yes, we have our walking group was we were originally part of Campus Club, which uh, Ollie graciously folded a few campus club interest groups into OLLI. Um, we've talked this past year how long we've been doing this, probably about 20 years, as closest as we can figure. Uh, we walk every Thursday morning. We start at nine o'clock. We meet someplace along the uh, rail trail, either the um, River Trail or Decker's Creek Trail. Uh, I send out an email on Tuesdays, hopefully I remember, about where to meet. Um, it's come as, you know, come or not, it's up to you. Uh, we have fast walkers, medium walkers, slow walkers. So you can walk at your own pace. This morning, we had a really nice group. We had about eight or nine people. We met at what we call our Marilla Park spot, which is at the intersection of Decker's Creek Boulevard and Route 7 across from the Greer building. And we walked towards town. And if you have a chance, if you don't regularly walk on the rail trail, that is a really nice walk in the morning. I'm not sure who's quite responsible for doing it, but there's a pollinator garden all along the bank, along the road for quite a good stretch. And there are lots and lots of milkweed growing there as well as other uh, plants to attract um, different kinds of insects, lots of sweet peas and things that we couldn't identify. <laughs> It was a really nice walk this morning. So, um, you know, it's if you are interested in walking about two or three miles once a week, we're it. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so that that is that group is here in Morgantown, but um, for people in the Canal Valley, um, our program assistant down there, Susan Martino, actually leads a monthly walking group, and we are open to ideas about starting other shared interest groups um, in the Canal Valley as well. So um, shared interest groups tend to meet all year round. Um, some meet September, <coughs> June. Um, some we, we meet weekly, others uh once a month so and they are included in the in as a benefit in your membership um also we have um special and special member events these are a weekly ollie virtual happy hour um we just get together on sunday evenings and talk about anything and everything latest sports news pets recipes gardening what books we're reading just anything that we want to chat about for an hour on sunday evenings on zoom and it's a great way to meet new people and and to stay in touch um michelle will um do a, a quarterly take a hike and she'll talk about that um later today too um in the canal valley this summer um canal valley members and Anybody else who wants to go down there will be visiting the West Virginia State Museum and Capitol. And uh, we're going to do some Ollie at the ballparks. So um, here in Morgantown, uh, we're going to do a, a group going to the um, a West Virginia Black Bears game. And in Charleston, we're going to go to a Charleston Dirty Birds game. Um, 
and also hosting uh, a documentary here in Morgantown, along with panel discussion, um, who who we are a chronicle of racism in America. We are working on getting one scheduled for the Charleston area as well. And uh, mo most of these are at are at um, little cost or no additional cost or a discounted cost for all members. Um, and then we do field trips. Uh, we try to do at least one field trip per term. This summer, we are going to Blennerhassett Museum and Island. Um, Non-members are invited so on the trip as well. So if you have a, a friend or family member that, that um, you would like to introduce to Ollie or who would like to come with you, they are welcome. There is a, a slightly higher cost for non-members. Um, Zoom training, if you're not familiar with Zoom, and then, of course, new friends who share your interest, a big benefit of Ollie. This is a picture of when we visited the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame up in Cleveland um, pre-pandemic. So, um, so let's talk about the term enrollment fee for a minute as part of our, our membership package. If you um, choose to pay per term, which is you are absolutely welcome to do. There is a flat term enrollment fee of $35. You can enroll in as many OLLI classes as you want for that $35. You can take one, you can take 16 or 20 if that's what fits into your schedule and you still have paid only $35 for that, for that uh, term. You only pay for the terms in which you wish to take classes. So let's say you take a few classes a summer, you, you do your membership at 30, you pay your $35. Um, then come fall, you're gonna take some classes in the fall, you only pay $35 because you've already paid your membership. But if there's nothing on the fall schedule, you think you're going to take some time off in the fall, um, so you don't pay your $35 term, $35 term enrollment fee, you still have access as a member to Ask a Geek, to the shared interest groups, and in any special member events. So um, there may be extra fees associated with some classes and some events um, that will help cover the costs of those things, especially if there's tickets involved or travel involved. Um, there's a couple classes we're doing a tea tasting where we have to pay. So there is a little additional cost for materials, but we try to keep those to a minimum. And there is also financial aid um, available. We do not want the cost of participating in OLLI to be a barrier to anyone. So if you need assistance with your membership or with your term enrollment fees or materials fees for classes, there is a scholarship application on our website or you can call the office and we will help you fill it out. All information is kept confidential and um, we do not require proof. We do not require any financial documentation. We take you at your word. Um, we do for the sake of, of Ali National, um, ask that you pay something if you can toward the cost of your membership, even if it's only $5. Um, that allows us to count you as one of our required 500 members that we have to have to keep the program going. So, but if you can't even, if you can't even do like a dollar, then that's okay. We, we will cover the full cost for you. Um, so this summer, we have over 50 classes and events um, to be held in person in Morgantown, in person in the Canal Valley, and on Zoom. Um, your next adventure it starts here. So with that, um, are there any questions about the program in general before we dive into having our, mem our volunteer instructors talk about their classes? Nope. Okay. Wonderful. Okay. So uh, first up is Sumitra. Um, Sumitra, are you, I see you on here. Are you with us? Yeah, I am. Okay. And so Sumitra Reddy is going to be teaching the Sea People and, and the Late Bronze Age Collapse in the Mediterranean. It's going to be held on <clears throat> Tuesdays, August 8 and 15 from 10 a.m. to 11.45 on Zoom. And Samicha, feel free to go ahead and, and tell us a couple minutes for, or a couple minutes about your class. Okay, thank you. Uh, uh, thank you very much. Uh, I will be teaching in August. My uh, class will be held on Tuesdays, August 8th and 15th and at 10 o'clock to 11.45. Uh, uh, I'm not uh, trained as an historian, either ancient or modern, but uh, I am very much interested in ancient history. 
So uh, from time to time, when I was preparing for other classes, I ran into this topic of this mysterious sea people and how they are connected with the late Bronze Age collapse, which happened between uh, 1276 BCE and 1178 BCE. And there are uh, competing theories. It's not just the uh, pirate-like sea people who ransacked many civilization uh, in the Mediterranean during that period, but there are other theories for civilization collapse, and that involves uh, climate change, earthquake, and uh, other competing theories. But uh, this may uh, be uh, this may have uh, happened at the same time. And uh, as a result of the Bronze Age collapse, uh, the Mediterranean area uh, plunged into dark ages and the writing system, which were developed early, they disappeared and it took several hundred years for uh, them to recover. And uh, about the sea peoples, uh, they are not just one group of people. I probably should have put sea peoples with an S because there are uh, suspects which uh, uh, may be Philistine or Asian or Sardinia and what have you, including even Balkan connection. So in this class, we will look into this mystery, uh, who they are and uh, other competing theories of the late Bronze Age collapse. Wonderful. My Thank you. Thank you so much. It sounds very interesting. Again, it's on Tuesdays, August 8 and 15 from 10 to 1145. Thank you. And thank you. And next up, we have Rabbi Joe Blair um, from Charleston. Would you like to tell us a little bit about your upcoming class, Elementary Ethics? Sure. How mm -hmm. would you solve it? It's going to be offered on Tuesdays, July 11th through the 25th, 1245 to 145 on Zoom. So it's a very simple process. We start out by having a case, a sort of situation presented, and we'll hear it and give some reactions to it, the initial thoughts that we have as a, a group. Then we'll test the reasoning of those solutions um, based on how good they are, and then try to compare them to proposals of Jewish ideas, the, the principles and texts, what answers might otherwise be proposed and, and evaluate all these proposed answers and come up with uh, what we think about them based on what do we think we've learned a, from the sources or from each other and how do we feel about these proposed answers. And um, you know there are all sorts of different values that we'll be using and we'll, we'll discuss what they are, but there's basically about two pages worth listing them you know, just one after another with a sort of title and maybe a little bit about where they come from. Uh, I'll give you the simplest, easiest one. The first case that we'll be looking at is one, these are based on either real situations or things that are realistic. Uh, so at a school, a bathroom wall is defaced with graffiti. And if I, as a student, might know who was, it was done by, if it happens again, what should I do? Do I accuse that person? Do I talk about who it might be? Do I turn them in? Do I tell them to stop? What is the answer that I would give and how would I justify what I choose among those? So that's the kind of discussion we'll have and we'll try to use things like the Talmud, the Torah, um, other writings in Jewish thought and sort of go into it a little more detail. Wonderful. Sounds very interesting. Thank you. Appreciate it. Um, again, it's elementary ethics. How would you solve it? And it's on Tuesdays, July 11th through the 25th at 1245 on Zoom. So um, up next, we have Andrea Elkins, who is going to talk about her class, The History of Gilbert and Sullivan Operettas. It is going to be offered on Thursdays, July 13th through August 3rd. 1245 to 230 and it is going to be on zoom and andrea remind me you are going to be in person here in morgantown you're still on mute i'm going to make sure you unmute there um zoom and 
in person. Yeah, Zoom in person. Yeah, in, in person in Morgantown. Wonderful. Well, go ahead. Tell us a few minutes. Give okay. us a few minutes on your class. Sure. So I got into GNS at a very young age. So my class will be be everything um everything you need to know about gns their 14 operas their characters um why why were they a part of um about you know musical theater um and i'm also very excited that i'm going to be introducing a gns um expert uh ted christopher who has performed these roles um we're also going to learn about queen victoria and her reign um and i was trying to do um i was trying to make everybody sing god save the queen but we're not going to do that but we're going to be learning just a lot about gns um but excited and looking forward to it wonderful well thank you i'm i'm certainly excited uh about hearing some more about it being a theater person myself so Thank you, Andrea. Okay, so um, again, History of Gilbert and Sullivan Operettas, The Pirates of Penzance is the one that comes, HMS Penafore, um, Thursdays, July 13th through August 3rd, 1245 to 2.30, Zoom and in person in Morgantown. Karen Long, you are up next. Karen is going to share with us Alpine Adventures, and I'll let her explain that title and what you'll be hearing. She's going to do this on Tuesday, July 11th at 10 a.m. on Zoom and in person in Morgantown. Thank you. Um, yes, as Jay just told you, we're going to have some further Alpine Adventures um, since I made up a lot of travel uh, this year. This was uh, originally scheduled for um, uh, September of 2020. And we all know why we didn't travel in September of 2020. So it was rescheduled for this past September. And um, so uh, four of us uh, from our Ollie here uh, participated and we are going, you are going to go with us um, in the same order as we uh, did the trip in September. So uh, we started in Northern Italy, um, stayed in a little town right on Lake Maggiore uh, called Stressa um, and did some things there. And then we went to Switzerland and obviously in Switzerland, you get to see the Alps. We stayed in Zermatt, a little town at the base of what you see here in uh, the picture that I must have shared with Jay uh, of the Matterhorn. Um, and we actually went up to the top of a, uh, a hill, uh, a mountain, um, on a, a cogwheel train uh, to see some shots of the area there, which was very pretty. So uh, we stayed in the Carlos town of Zermatt. Um, and so everybody walks around or uses electric vehicles. And I will tell you that day, it's because they don't want all that smog from vehicles to obscure their money maker of being able to see the Matterhorn. So that's why they for a long time have not had anything but walking and electric cars. So from Switzerland, we took a train um, called the um, uh, Glacier Express, uh, which was an all day train ride. Uh, and we ended up um, near uh, Austria. So then we got on a bus and went to Innsbruck where we stayed, you might remember Innsbruck uh, from the Winter Olympics um, and a day trip uh, to Salzburg. Uh, most of us of our generation probably know Salzburg as the um, uh, locale for the Sound of Music movie, and they certainly um, uh, let you know that when you're there, um, and that was a lot of fun. Then the last place we went was to uh, Bavaria. Bavaria is an area of Germany, uh, and we went uh, to Munich, which was our last stop, and what this trip was basically advertised as was the Omar Amagal Passion Play. We'll talk, I'm going to make you wait till class uh, to talk about why there is a Passion Play, how often does it go on, any little details uh, about it, and the, the pretty little time 
uh, of Omaramagal. And then we finished up in Munich, Germany. Uh, you may know that as another uh, place where there was Summer Olympics this time um, and the home of Mercedes-Benz um, and a few other things. So um, join me in person if you want to in the first week of, of summer classes. Uh, and as Jay said, Tuesday, July 11th, uh, we're going to be in person. So come if you would like to and also on Zoom if yes. you um, can't. Okay. And I think that's it. Thank you. All right. So um, up next is Jack Hammersmith. A century ago, how different was it? Thank you. And how it, 1923 is a long time ago, but Henry Kissinger was born in that year and he's still around. So a lifetime can stretch that long. I've always been fascinated by taking a year. Uh, I remember many years ago in the early 1980s, a book published and the title of it was 19, uh, 1587, A Year of No Significance. That always intrigued me. Uh, it was an award-winning book, by the way. It, the author found there was some significance in it, obviously. And uh, this had to do with the Ming Dynasty and its eventual collapse. But I like taking a year or two years, maybe 25, 50, 100 years ago, and making some comparisons. As far as 1923, it was a year of tragedy, for one thing. The great Kanto or Tokyo earthquake occurred in that year. Over 140,000 died in that earthquake. It was devastating to Japan. It was devastating also because it uh, triggered a rise of racism against Koreans living in Japan. So it had a very dark side beyond the tremendous expense and livelihood of the Japanese people. It had some positives. Uh, a lot of world nations uh, gathered around contributing to the relief of the Japanese. So there was uh, certainly a generosity that was shown there. It was the year of death with President Warren Harding, whom we've just talked about a little bit in our uh, present course on uh, the health of presidents. Harding was the sixth president to die in office at that time, three by the bullet. But uh, this one, Harding, with rumors abounding that he had died not by an assassin's bullet uh, and not by natural causes as had uh, William Henry Harrison and Zachary Taylor, but murdered, poisoned by his wife, seeking revenge for his womanizing. So we'll examine those dimensions of Warren Harding's death. And uh, I think you'll find that rather intriguing. 1923 was a year of drama. There's 25,000 Ku Klux Klaners gathered up here in Carnegie, Pennsylvania, uh, demonstrating their considerable political clout at the time. The 1920s had seen a revival a few years before that of the Klan, and one just couldn't survive politically if one took a, a very anti-Klan position, at least not in most parts of the United States, not just in the South now. It, has its, it had its strength in Indianapolis and Indiana, uh, but uh, had branches uh, all over the place. 1923, you could send a letter for two cents. Commercial flying was in its ninth year, having been launched between St. Petersburg, Florida and Tampa in 1914. And the New York Yankees won their first of, I must say, many World Series in that year. This one with a 28 year old pitcher batter from Pigtown, Maryland. Well, we know it is Baltimore today, but uh, you'll find Pigtown, a section of Baltimore often referred to as Babe Ruth's birthplace. So that's just a little sampling of some of the things we plan to do in this one-time course, July the 12th, July, yes, July the 12th at 10 o'clock. I hope to see you there. Thanks. Thank you, Jack. Uh, yeah, again, Wednesday, July 12th, 10 a.m., Zoom and in person in Morgantown. Um, okay, so next up, 
we have Kenton Colvin. Kenton is actually teaching two classes for us. So I'm going to let him talk about these. The first one, Women and the Great Depression, is going to be on Wednesday, August 12th at 1245. And that's on Zoom and in person. Oh, well, hello. Um, actually, uh, I taught uh, about the Great Depression uh, last year in an Ollie class, and um, several of the people that were in the class asked me, well, what happened to the women? And so my focus on this class is just a one-week class, and I'll be dealing with what happened to the women um, and uh, a lot of it has to do with uh, uh, I'm coming into the 20s. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to share just a few uh, information on the 20s where the women started becoming out uh, away from the home. And then the Great Depression forced them back into the home. But what, what actually happened to them? How did they deal with it? What were their accomplishments? Uh, so I'll just be discussing... I'm going to focus on what transpired with the women uh, during that time period. And uh, so the class will be on Wednesday, August the 12th, 1245. And I hope I'll see some of you there. Okay, thank you. And actually, you want to talk a little bit about uh, Bible Me Mysteries, Secrets and Intrigues, Part 2. Uh, uh, just so you know, that, that course I taught also, I taught that one last year, <clears throat> and it turned out uh, that I had some people that wanted to hear some more. Actually, the Bible is such a large book, and it has so much in it that most people only hear the some famous stories, David and Goliath or something like that, but there is a lot of information within the Bible that... Uh, are basically mysteries. It's it's kind of things that nobody ever heard of, and it's intrigues. Some things that you can't even believe, um, like what judge had seventy sons, um, what prophet uh, married a prostitute, uh, and the, a good one would be what soldier murdered a man while he was kissing him. So it's not just those type of things, but it's going to be a lot of things about things that you can that most people never heard of or even thought of in the Bible. Um, there's just so much in there that um, I just wanted to share some more. Uh, so this is going to be part two. Uh, it'll be a one day class and I'll be sharing all different types of things um, that kind of maybe stimulate a curiosity or, or you might say, gee, I never knew that would be in the Bible. Uh, so that's the purpose for this particular class. And it'll be on Monday, August the 7th at 1245. And again, hope to see some of you there. And it's on both uh, Zoom and in person. Yes, thank you. I was just going to say it, Zoom and in person in Morgantown. Thank you, Kenton. Um, really looking forward to those. Next up, Next up. Michelle. Is Michelle Clichus is going to talk about get to, there we go. Um, going to talk about hiking West Virginia state parks. Hiking our parks and is a is a passion of Michelle's, and we're happy to have her do this for us. It's going to be on Thursday, July twentieth at ten a.m. on Zoom and in person. So anyone who has spent more than say five minutes with me knows that I will eventually end up talking about hiking. Um, I love hiking in the winter and that's something that not a lot of people get to do. Um, so I usually take a ton of pictures when I go out hiking, especially not just in the winter, but in places that are sometimes hard to get to that people don't have the ability to go to. So I had done these classes um, uh, during the height of the pandemic, um, but I do as with the class I did this spring, I do have different pictures and more information added in, so it's not exactly the same as it was. So you can see some different pictures of the various places that I'm going to go to. And as JC had mentioned, I am going to lead a hike at Cooper's Rock. I do that 
once a term, though, I haven't been doing it in the winter because nobody but me likes hiking. Um, though if somebody was interested, we could look into that. So those are my two hiking related things. I'm also going to be doing tech security. Now I've been teaching tech security almost since I started and uh, at everyone's demand, complaints, request, I split up what was previously a three hour class into four classes, which are two hours each. So what that means is I get to go into a little more detail about the various things I'm going to cover. So I did two classes in the spring, and then I'm going to do the next two in the summer. And then in the fall, I'll start the circle all over again. And so I've mentioned this before, if you've taken my classes, you can take tech security as many times as you want because it's a lot of information and it's overwhelming, but I think it's really important. All right. Okay, thank you. Uh, th so the two that, that Michelle is gonna share this um, summer are staying safe online and that's gonna be on Thursday, July 27th at 10 a.m. And then on Thursday, August 3rd, the next week is going to be devices and social media. Um, thank you. All right. Next up, we have Christy Gregory. Christy is going to talk about a couple of classes that she is teaching with John Gregory. Hi. Um, so my husband, John, is a very avid motorcycle rider and quite often I ride with him too. Uh, a lot of our our trips revolve around going to see motorcycles, getting together with our friends to talk about it um, and often to ride. But last summer uh, was special. We uh, went on a two-week two -week trip with eight of our riding buddies. We towed our bikes and then rode into the mountains of South Dakota, um, Wyoming, Montana, and even a little bit into Idaho. And this this is one of the photos uh, that we took from the Beartooth Highway in Wyoming. Uh, so you can see we were riding up to where there was still a little bit, bit of snow in some places too. Um, so we're just gonna take you along on that trip, show you some photos and share some video of what it's like to ride a motorcycle up in the mountains. So it's pretty much a travelogue. We'll also talk a little bit about how to plan such a trip and, and um, some different ways that you can document it as well. Ken. Okay, yep. <laughs> the phrase that we all know so well. Um, this one is going to the sun, a group motorcycle tour. I think it sounds totally fascinating. It's going to be on Tuesdays, August 1 and 8 at 1245, and it'll be on Zoom and in person in Morgantown. And then your second class is motorcycling after 50. So if that class perhaps intrigues you and you think you want to take up motorcycling or you want to take it up again, um, we find a lot of our friends used to ride. They stopped riding while their kids were growing up and now they want to start riding again. And we're going to talk about some ways that make it safer with newer technologies. Um, that's for the bike, for the gear that you wear, um, the technology for um, traveling and, and tracking. Uh, we're both from a planning and from a tracking standpoint, uh, communication devices, um, lots of things that make it safer for you to ride now than it was even 10 years ago. Um, we're also gonna talk a little bit about what you as a driver can do to keep those of us on motorcycles a little safer um, because oftentimes it's not us, it's the other drivers. Uh, so we'll talk a little bit about that as well. Wonderful, so. thank you. And actually this one, Motorcycling After 50 on Tuesday, August 15th, 1245. This is gonna be in-person only in Morgantown because we're hoping John can maybe bring the motorcycle in and, and show it off. Um, but you know what? We might be able to talk John and Christy into doing it in Charleston live sometime too in the future. <laughs> <laughs> we'll talk about that oh, one. A motorcycle ride? Oh my. Oh my, um, yes. Yeah. Yeah. We do have to bring in the bike and wear our gear in and all that and give you a feel for, for what that's like. And we'll also do some some video of us riding um in on some West Virginia roads as well. Fun. 
fun. Well, Thanks. thank you. Appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay. Up next, Kathy Elkins. Kathy is going to crank some ice cream and teach us how to crank some ice cream. This one's going to be in person, both in Morgantown and then the following week in person in the Canal Valley, um, 1245. So I'll let her talk about this one. Great. Thank you. It's on two Wednesday. Well, one Wednesday in Morgantown, which is August 16th, and then one Wednesday in Charleston, which is August 23. And yes, Justina, I need help cranking that ice cream. But uh, my dilemma was I had been newly retired. This is a repeat class that I did six years ago, five years ago. Uh, and it was so fun to do the research. Um, I come from a family of ice cream crankers, but I wanted to figure out how can I do an academic class on ice cream. So I decided to focus on the ice part uh, and, and um, talking about, you know, what happened 100 years ago. We didn't have electricity to do ice cream back then. We didn't even, most of us didn't have refrigerators. Um, so we will be discussing... Um, the history of ice uh, involving ice harvesting, ice harvesting tools, ice houses, and the industry that, that started around ice houses, ice shipping, uh, even across the Atlantic Ocean. We'll talk about ice shipping as far away as um, uh, Europe. Um, we'll talk about the ice man who delivered ice to your apartment, and you, so you could put it in your ice boxes. Then we'll talk about early refrigeration and the uh, history of cocktails, because we really didn't have cocktail beverages until we had ice uh, to put in those um, mixtures of alcohol and juices. Uh, we will. So the first hour is going to be the uh, my PowerPoint presentation on ice. Lots of um, photographic information and just fascinating stuff, um, history in that, but also there's some physics involved with ice and chemistry. Then we're going to be um, actually uh, getting our hands on the White Mountain Ice Cream Cranker. We're going to do two ba batches. Um, I'm hoping to do a batch of peach using Governor Welch's um, peach ice cream recipe. He was the governor of Indiana, where my family is from. Uh, and we may do strawberry or tropical fruit. Um, so there will be plenty of ice cream to spare. Um, I think I put a limit of 35 people on each class. So we'll have plenty. And I hope you'll join us for that cool, fun event. Wonderful. Thank you. I'll be there, at least here in Morgantown. And I thought you had said strawberry. That's why when I found the strawberry cone here, I was like, pretty sure she said strawberry. So <laughs> wonderful. Looking, definitely looking forward to that. Thank you so much, Kathy. Um, next up, Jim Held. Um, We're going to uh, do summer musicals again this summer. This is Film Forum. It's held on Friday afternoons, July 14th through August 18th, 1245 here at the Mountaineer Mall. It is in person in Morgantown. And Jim, I can actually share, you shared with me the, um, the poster of such. So let me stop sharing. If you want to go ahead and start talking about it, and I will share the poster here. Well, in the summer, um, I felt it was just uh, the thing to do to have fun and music. And so this will be the fourth summer. Um, we did have a pandemic uh, intermission for a couple of years, but this would be our fourth summer to have all musicals. And I do like to present both uh, more current work and some historical uh, musicals. And so if you, look at the poster here, We've, we're going to begin with a little night music, which um, that musical actually would started out as a film, Smiles of a Summer Night by Ingmar Bergman, which is a, a delightful uh, musical or, or play, comic play. But uh, Sondheim decided to, to make it into a little night music, the, the musical, all of the songs are presented in waltz time, and it's just a romance. Uh, and, and the big surprise in this particular production is that Elizabeth Taylor plays uh, the, the sort of feminine 
the, 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 the lady of the theater, perhaps a courtesan, and uh, et cetera. Well, I, I can't talk that much about everyone, but then we're going to do two funnies. Funny face is, is Audrey Hepburn and, and Fred Astaire, and that's one of our more uh, historic pieces, wonderful film. And then we have F Funny Girl, which was Barbara Streisand's introduction to Broadway as a, I think she was only about 18 when she made a hit on Broadway in Funny Girl. And so she was not going to be denied doing the lead in the film version with Omar Sharif. So um, it's a wonderful tune filled musical. Much more recently is In the Heights. And this was the, the first musical of Lin-Manuel uh, Miranda, who also wrote that obscure musical, uh, something about Hamilton. And uh, so this, this celebrates Washington Heights in New York. And the film is, is, is just sheer delight. Lots of dancing and, uh, and little stories personal stories thrown in. Really historical is Cabin in the Sky. And you can just barely see there that it features Ethel Waters and Lena Horne. Um, and uh, it's just a wonderful um, all black cast, um, a very historic document. And then we will end with La La Land, which is the most recent um, musical. And uh, I, I remember when we saw it in the theater it, at the very, it's one of those pieces that it just starts with a bang. You know, there are people on the freeway in Los Angeles and suddenly they, the traffic stops and everybody gets out and is dancing on, in or around the cars. And, and it just goes on from there. So lots of fun, summer musicals, number four. Okay. Wonderful. And we will we will be meeting uh, Fridays beginning July 14th at 1245 in person in Morgantown. Sorry, Kanawha Valley. Uh, oh, well, wow. we'll see what we can do about getting a film start, film series started there. Um, the thing about the, the film series is that Jim does a great job of, of introducing the film, of giving you some history of the film. So there really is a curriculum built around seeing these films. You're not just watching a film on that day. You're really learning a lot about it, a lot about the genre. So um, it's, it's a wonderful experience. So um, that is just a sampling of the 50-ish classes that we have available this summer here in Morgantown and, and in the Kanawha Valley. Um, there's, there's a class on the Secret City um, that's going to be in person only in the Kanawha Valley. Um, for members who are familiar with the teaching of Steve Holsclaw, he is doing classes, geology classes again in the Kanawha Valley in person this summer. Um, here in Morgantown, we're going to be visiting the WVU Insect Museum. Who knew they even had one? I came across it one day. Um, so if you have a desire to pet a tarantula, you might be able to do that on this trip to the WVU Insect Museum this summer. Um, lots of great opportunities. Um, and, and as you saw, we have a good mix of lectures, hands-on experiences, adventures. We really tried to pack the summer with the kind of get out and go outdoors experiences or hands-on um, kind of kinds of options. So, um, so we have something for everybody. Um, now, part of Ollie's mission is serving our communities. We want to make sure that we're we're giving back and that we are part of the community too. So we routinely partner with other nonprofit organizations to provide educational opportunities um, for everyone, from our members and members of the community. Some of those partners in the past have included the Community Coalition for Social Ju Justice, uh, Main Street Morgantown, the City of Morgantown. Uh, WVU retirees, um, the WVU committee for retired faculty, the Shack neighborhood house, and festival in Charleston. Um, we've also partnered with the South Charleston Public Library for uh, for some things as well. So um, we're always seeking out those partnerships and and 
being a part of the community as a whole as well. Um, and along those lines, seeking out partnerships, we also offer community programming. So when you look at our catalog or on our website, um, we have a section that's called community events. And these are um, open to the public and usually free. They don't even require an OLLI membership to participate in them. Um, one such example is a weekly Saturday morning Tai Chi class that we offer at the Shack Neighborhood House here in Morgantown. Um, online monthly, we have a, on, it's on a Wednesday afternoon, we partner with the Committee for Retired Faculty, and, and it's a lecture or presentation on a, uh, a community program, on an uh, area of research that, that we think would be of interest. We've presented some History Alive presentations. Um, those are done through the um, West Virginia Humanities Council, I believe that's what it's called, um, where we, we learn about a historical figure. A, a performer will will do a performance of this historical figure and then talk to the audience both as that person and as themselves as the actor. So we've heard from Harriet Tubman, we've heard from Franklin Delano Roosevelt, um, Ruby Bradley. So we're going to be offering a couple of those and those are always free and open to the public as well. And annually in September, Ollie hosts the Irving Goodman Aging Lecture Series. Um, this, this year's um, presentation, we'll be publicizing this shortly, but the presentation is going to be by a WVU faculty member whose research and teachings focus on communication and family and maintaining open communication and how to talk to family members. You know, there's there's so much strife between, um, we seem to be such a divided country in so many ways. And, and her research and her presentation is gonna be about how we can talk to each other and maintain communication. Um, even, you know, even in times of where we don't think we can see eye to eye and how we can can support each other and keep those family relationships up. So watch for more information about the Irving Goodman Aging Lecture. That'll be held in September. It's always a community event, always free and open to the public. Um, if you have not gotten a course catalog. Well, this is what the, the front of it looks like, um, although it is black and white. The printed copies are in black and white, but you can also find a copy online. We encourage you to check out the online version um, because the minute the printed version goes to press, there are additions to it. Um, for those of you who have seen the, the printed version but haven't checked out online yet, we already have added a what's called a canopy tour, which is a zip lining class. Um, we've added a cooking class to the summer schedule. And there's a couple others that, that might be coming up that aren't in the printed version. So be, be sure to check out the catalog online. Um, you can also get the latest information about class changes, um, class cancellations, class additions, et cetera, on the updates page of our news site. And this is always pinned here where it says updates. It's always pinned to the top of our news site. Um, this is the uh, website here where you can find that. We keep that up to date and it's at the top of your Friday bulletin every week as well. Um, you can also find that information um, on our website by clicking on the gold news button. That'll take you directly to our news site. Registration for the summer term starts on Tuesday, June 20th. We are closed next Monday for Juneteenth, but we will be open on Tuesday, June 20th, and registration will begin at 9 a.m. You can register by phone by calling 304-293-1793. You can register online at this web address or through our OLLI website. Um, or if you're in the Morgantown area and want to stop by, the office will be open from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. on that day. So uh, with that, are there any questions? I'm going to say a big thank you before we wrap up, a big thank you to all of our instructors. Um, the ones who joined us here today, thank you so much for helping us um, promote 
Ollie and let people know what's going on and what you're teaching. But also thank you to all of our instructors. Our instructors are all volunteers and they devote an extraordinary amount of time and effort to preparing classes for our members. And we are very, um, very grateful, very appreciative and very lucky to have them with us. And if there are no further questions, then um, it is four o'clock and thank you for joining us and have a wonderful day.